just a little bit. We have completely gone around the Steens Mountains and out ahead of us lays the Albert Desert with this vast playa spread out here for miles in front of us. When we reach the spot where we're going to camp, we go for a short hike. Since we're here to see the wildflowers, the ergoniums are in bloom. The asters are painting the hillsides yellow. Our tent is down below us as we look down upon it. We're just on the hill behind it. And our vehicle is there. A gentle desert breeze is blowing. The hot springs is just below us here. There are clumps of asters every place you look here, all with their bright yellow blossoms, adding brilliant colors to the otherwise bleak desert floor. They rock in a slight desert breeze here on the foothills of the Steens Mountains. An ergonium sets in the protection of a sagebrush with its clusters of bright yellow flower. A hayfield tarweed stands with its petals stretched out wide on the desert floor. A desert floor would be pretty bleak without the blues of this little primrose. The slender hawk's beard has its place in the scheme of colors, the Indian paintbrush with its bright reds is definitely one of the favorite flowers out here. And they can be quite thick on a hillside, painting the hill a bright red. They are the state flower for a few states, Wyoming being one of the states. The sand lilies are almost finished with their blooming cycle. The lupin appear here in several different colors. In the scheme of things, nature has even provided us with a violet blue flower with an orange center just to add brilliance and color to the desert floor. Even some of the brush is in bloom here this time of year. In direct contrast to the gray of the sagebrush. A jackrabbit sets in the shade here thinking he's hid with his camouflage and he's ready to hop off into the safety of the sagebrush at the first sign of danger. His long ears are up scanning the area for the least little sound. When danger is sensed, he uses those powerful hind legs to bounce to safety. The arrow-leafed balsa root is blooming a little bit here now. This was used by the Indians to make it through the winter. The hillsides are just literally painted with flowers here. The deadly larkspur are part of the scheme of nature here on the hillside waving gently in a breeze. A striped lizard is hid here amongst the wild flowers. Even though it looks peaceful here, there are several poisonous plants growing here, one of them being the deadly death camas. We're in the Steens Mountains and what's a trip to the Steens Mountain without seeing the Steens Mountain Thistle, a thistle that's unique to this area. Another death camas with its tiny flowerlets gently swaying in the breeze. A few pedestals stand on the hillside ahead of us. With their bell-shaped flowers open wide hoping for pollinization. The yellow lupin is one of the more fragrant flowers we found up here on this hillside. 
and this is a pretty yellow one. Marge can't get enough of it. As we go downhill toward the hot springs, we hear the call of the long-billed curlew. They feed out in the little field around the hot springs at all times. They nest on the ground back in the brush behind the hot springs. Several pair of them nest there. These birds were almost hunted to extinction. They were at one time eaten and thought to be... Now this is another penstemon. Right, this is the same variety. After our hike, it's now time to go check out the hot springs. The hot water is running from a little hot ditch down to the springs, and then it's piped into the springs in an old piece of irrigation pipe. These pools were built in 1937, so they've been here a while. The old irrigation pipe comes down with plenty of water for both pools. There's some old wash machine tubs setting in the bottom of the pools as chairs. There's a nice deck around the pools and also a bench to set on here and look out over the playa. There's even a dressing room here where you can go in and hang your clothes in most any kind of weather and you can sit in the dressing room and look out across the desert into the playa. The tin around the hot springs has a lot of character, a lot of bullet holes in it. I'm going to Pike Creek next to look at some wild flowers. Well, this is another penstemon. Right, this is the same variety, but you can see the complete difference in color from the sky blue to this, this nice purple violet color. Uh -huh. It looks as though a single seed of a juniper tree has been cast on the rock and it grew right out of the rock here. What a sight. A trip to Pike Creek is never complete without going down to the creek and seeing some of the Lahontan cutthroat trout there. They look almost like any other trout from a distance, but when you look close, there's quite a bit of difference in these. One thing, they've adapted to where they can withstand the extreme heat of summer in some of the shallow streams and they can also withstand the super high alkali content of a lot of the streams where they live. These trout are doing pretty well here in Pike Creek and of course they're closed to fishing because this is one of the sites where the original unspoiled bloodline of these fish still exist. They cruise around in shallow little Pike Creek looking for a bug or something to eat. And when a bug comes, they jump up and grab him. These cutthroat trout have the same name as the ones found in Man Lake, but the ones in the lake have been hybrid, so they grow faster and grow larger. So these are the original unspoiled bloodline that you could always go back and spawn some from these fish. They have been here since the Albert Desert was at one time a productive lake being 700 feet deep. There were lots of these big guys in there at that time but now they're limited to one little stream here. Although there are some other streams that run down that I expect do have some in. It's okay to go there and observe these very special little trout in the stream. Just remember to leave your fishing pole at home because they're so limited in numbers. Any little insect that happens to fly in the water, these little fish will swim to the surface and grab him. A little golden mantle ground squirrel sets up on the rock very important like with his little fat belly hanging out 
and he's adding to that belly it looks to me like they're a very gentle little ground squirrel and the way you can tell them from a chipmunk is their stripes just go to the back of the neck but don't continue up over their head where a chipmunk's stripes continue up over their head and these are larger than a chipmunk he's considering going off and hiding but oh well they've already seen me he figures so why not finish the meal the choke cherries are blossoming here with their very sweet aroma and later on like toward fall there will be a really nice tasting little berry that was used by the Indians a lot. They mixed them with grasshoppers and dried them. This playa is a mixture of boraxes and salts and clays and volcanic ash and it is very smooth and it's designated as an emergency landing strip for large aircraft and it's also uh, designated as an emergency landing strip for space shuttles. It looks as though one pickup just passed the other as they race across the desert. We've found that the source for the hot springs is just an excellent place to cook food. We'll put a canned goods or something like that in there and go off and leave it and within a few hours it's just too hot to use it's just really good but the spring isn't hot enough that it bulges the cans so they can be left in there quite a while it cooks potatoes and eggs excellent too a little quail stands on a fence post crowing like he's king of the rock A killdeer is sneaking around here with the steam of the hot springs behind him, giving his calls and darting around, picking up things to eat. There's simply no better place in the world to watch the sunrise than at the hot springs with the Albert Desert out front and sometimes that Albert Desert just shines when the sun starts to raise over the top of it. Each day is different as the sun is a different color when it comes up each day and one should never miss the sunrise over the de desert because if you miss a day, it'll never be the same again. Slowly, the sun creeps above the horizon, warming you up and giving the feeling of peace out here. It's not all fun and games and not everyone has time to set at the hot springs and watch the sun rise and hear the birds sing. There's work must be done and the working cowboys of the Albert Ranch are going to move their cattle, cows and calves. The cows have been freshly branded and they're moving them up into the high country of the Steens for their summer range. There's a cloud of dust coming, accompanied with some cowboys and the bellering of cows as the cows are herded across the sagebrush plain here and then up across the road and into the Steens Mountains. There are plenty of dog power and plenty of horses.
This is a lifestyle that's downright addictive. Once you've been out here, I think you would always have the desire to go back. It's the bouncing of the horse beneath you, the bellering of cows, the cloud of dust, and an occasional jackrabbit will hop out to freedom in the sagebrush. A once in a while, a mule deer will bound off through the sagebrush. And the cows, poets, artists, and movie makers have tried to glorify this and let you see what it really is like, but you'll never really know till you experience it firsthand. It's this wonderful free lifestyle. You're up before daylight and sometimes you're in the saddle till after dark at night chasing these bellowing cows as they stir up their cloud of dust up into the high country and then in the fall it's bringing them back down. Once a cowboy, how would you ever be able to stand life in the city working in an office with four walls around you? I think none of these people would be able to deal with that after being out here in the freedom of the open country. <laughs> In the saddles, it's not always range season cowboys. There are even beautiful girls riding on top of some of the horses as well. <laughs> Cow dogs have an important part in this operation too. The bellowing of the cows becomes more faint as they head higher and higher into the Steens Mountains. Some of the horses have more energy than they know what to do with, so they have to be turned in circles till finally toward the end of the day, maybe it'll settle down and line out with the rest of the horses.
That very pretty horse is probably going to be dizzy by the end of the day and will have walked at least twice farther than all the rest of the horses. So he should line out and be okay here in a little bit. As the day wears on, the cows are just like little specks as they move up into the high country of the Steens to lush green grass that they'll find up there. Carl and I want to go jackrabbit hunting, and when you're within a few months and 90 years old and you want to go jackrabbit hunting, you want to go jackrabbit hunting. So we're on our way jackrabbit hunting. Generally if you just come out along the edge of the desert, it's about this time for the lake to start to start you see them. Starts getting the time of day they're out and around, huh? Yeah. You think there'd be any down this way? Pardon? You think they'd be down this way any? I doubt it very much. That's all it's open flat country. Thank you, rabbits is very interested out there. Okay. I'll go you back. Like you're wrong, but <laughs> yeah. The rabbits were around, but by now we're out of the mood of hunting rabbits. So we just watch some of them as they sneak around through the sagebrush. These jackrabbits are part of the West, equally as much as the cows and the cowboys and the horses and the dogs. It's time for us to go on another hike, so we'll take the little miners trail up into the higher elevation of the Steens Mountains. A doe antelope is galloping around here but not trying to run away. We think she's got one of her fawns or maybe a couple fawns stashed here and she doesn't want us to find them so she just hangs around. The wild flowers are just blooming their heads off up here we look back on the old orchard here in Little Indian Creek where some of the old miners lived. On up the trail we go. The views are spectacular as we look out across the Albert Desert. A butterfly is hovering on this member of the buckwheat family here. On the trail we spot our first rattlesnake of the season. He's just come out of hibernation and it doesn't even look as though he's eaten. He looks a little bit mean, but he's just out on the road sunning himself to warm up a little. So we just let him go ahead and crawl up into the... He was definitely on the crabbing, crabby side. He sure did a lot of rattling and hissing. He hasn't eaten yet, we can tell because he has no knots where food would be. Just above the old miner's cabin, two mule deer bucks, both in the velvet, hurry up and cross the ridge. The old magpie nest here is still in the tree. I thought the baby magpies might be out on the limbs, but they're not yet. A mud dauber nest hangs in the old cabin, and a swallow nest is perched here in the old cabin as well. There's the nests from last year have collapsed down. These are the barn swallows, not the cliff swallows that we saw earlier. What a view from the old cabin, the ruins of the old cabin. You can sit on the old couch and look out. Some flocks are in bloom out in front of the cabin. as well as some of the wild tulip. We've got cow manure here on the side of our car and that's all the real deal. There's nothing artificial about that. Here in cow country, better expect a little of that. It's good for it. It's now time for us to leave the Albert Desert. We pack up and head up the road. We stalk for a moment 
to take a look at the old stone structures here. The old stone house. The house and at least one of the outbuildings are built of stone here and the ruins of it are still standing. Just beyond the old stone house we encounter our second rattlesnake of the season and it doesn't look as if he's fed either. I don't see any knots where he might have swallowed a mouse or something and he's a pretty good sized one too. He's got a lot of rattles. We are heading out to look for some old caves we've heard about out there. I stop at a ranch to ask directions and here was this extremely pretty horse there. We find our directions and we're heading out through the sagebrush to where we can find these old caves hopefully. It seems to be a sea of sagebrush and the road is somewhat rough. There are definitely no signs of any kind out here and we get out here and we're going to have a little difficulty finding this cave at first. So we just keep trying different roads here. Some of them are even a little bit dusty. The rancher told me there was no problem finding these caves, but we're already having a little bit of a problem, but maybe we'll find it here around each bend we're looking for the cave. There were supposed to be some sheep herders monuments out by the cave, and we're seeing more sheep herders monuments than I've seen in my whole life altogether. There are groups of them here. They're on every hilltop, all different shapes and sizes of them. We find first, it looks like an old collapsed lava tunnel here. So maybe we're getting close. We just got to find a spot where it isn't collapsed. That's not it. So we're moving on. Hour after hour we search for these caves. All sorts of lava flows where the lava rock has been piled high here by nature. But still no cave. We find a tiny cave but it seems to go nowhere. So this surely can't be the caves. I'm still not ready to give up on them. We've invested too much time and eaten too much dust to give up on it. So we find one more fork of the road. And so we'll go out it and see what's out there. There's an interesting sheep herders monument. Maybe the caves around it someplace. Maybe that's guiding the sheep herders to the mouth of the cave. So we'll check everything out here. From the looks of our vehicle, we've eaten a little bit more than a little bit of dust. And there it is. The thing we've been looking so hard for. The mouth of the cave. So it's time to go in and do a little cave exploring. Wow, what a hole. Okay, now walk right down into it. To the right. Marge is being a little overly cautious here, looking for rattlesnakes as she walks through the weeds into the okay, entrance in. of this giant lava tube. She disappears out of sight, and I follow. I can feel the cold air coming out of the cave before I ever start in. This is a re it's a hot day out and this is just super nice and cool in here. And there's all kinds of blackening on the cave walls here from it was undoubtedly used by early Americans here. And a big enough room here to have a full fledged ceremony here.
It's just huge. How far back does it go? Well, it goes forever. Can you come on back here? Can you see from that light? Just a second. Now ahead of me there's some rock debris, but the cave continues on. As I get back in here, it seems like the rooms, the rooms are even bigger here and a nice high ceiling. Wow, what a place to live. It's just a gigantic cave and it's continuing on and on and on. But I don't know how long my light's going to last here. I should have brought another light with me to go in here. On the side walls here, uh, it's visible where the, the lava flowed out of here. The way these, uh, the river lava run through here. And what happened is something happened to the source of the lava. And all the lava in the in this underground tube, the lava all ran out, and and left this gigantic cave here, and it just keeps going on and on here. Huge rooms and everything. I don't expect there are that many people that have ever been back to this one. And it must continue on here for possibly miles. By now I can just barely see the light at the end of the tunnel and I must be in here about 300 feet. And the cave continues on. More evidence of the river of lava flowing through here. And the ceiling isn't quite as high beyond this point, but it's still a huge, huge cave. It's pinching down to where the roof's a little bit closer to the floor here, but still it goes on and on. Now the floor is pretty nice going here. There's no debris that's collapsed off the ceiling here on it. And the cave is wandering first to the left and now to the right. And I can't see, it's total darkness in here now. And 
I can't see the opening. No light in the opening. And it continues on. By now I must be in here over 200 yards and the cave is still twisting and winding its way under the mountain here in grand spectacular style. Those Basque sheep herders that were here that built all the sheep herders monument must have used this for in the summer when it's hot and in the winter when it's cold but right now I've gone in far enough I'm getting chilly. It's so cool back in here. I just have short sleeves on it. The cave continues on. I've never ha heard how far back in it goes, but I must be in at least 300 yards now and still going. I'm not sure how much longer my light's going to last, but I think I'll, it seems to be getting a little dimmer. I think I'll turn around but this may go in here miles. What a cave. And the floor is just fine powder here. I was back there farther than I thought. I'm, I've walked quite a while on the way back and I haven't got to where I can see the light of day yet. But my light's still holding out. Hopefully it'll last. And finally I round a curve and I can see light of day at the opening at the end of the tunnel here. The light at the end of the tunnel. Well, it looks like Marge is still there taking flashes with her little camera. For just a few yards here it's kind of rough going I have to cross over some big boulders that have collapsed down from the ceiling but on both sides of that it's really good going there's some interesting lava that has formed here another interesting twisted lava these pieces here must have collapsed off the wall that looks like the material that's on the wall. Here's a much larger debris pile here that I have to climb over to get out. And there it is, the cave entrance right ahead of me. I've almost made it out of there. I was sure back there a long ways and it continued on. Lava here toward the entrance and some little pockets up there and here is the entrance finally. I'm starting to feel a little warmer right now. It's almost like it has a refrigeration cycle in there. I got really chilly in there. Wow, it's like stepping into a blast furnace now that I come out of it though. Cave okay, where it the entrance to it's right down in that hole. Here's a sheep herders monument here, and a sheep herders monument there, and the road's right out in front of us. And then up on the horizon, there are four more sheep herders monuments out there, and more caves. We've got a little dust to eat before we get out of here, so. I think we'll turn around first available place and get out of here. 
Looks like my ice chest's even a little dusty. Now it's time for us to go, and we have to eat a little bit of dust before we get out onto the main roads here as we wind through the sagebrush flats here. We may be seeing ruts and dust in our sleep tonight as we wind out through this dusty, dusty road. I've been trying to think of a name for my vehicle and I've finally thought of one. Old